Hello again everyone and welcome back to my channel. On this flash drive right here I have something really special to show you guys and no it's not Fedora even though well that's what the label says. I keep forgetting to remove the labels from my old flash drives. Actually what I have on this flash drive is the latest release candidate of the GNOME edition of Manjaro. And in this video, we're going to take a look at all of the new features so you can see what you have to look forward to as soon as this becomes the final version. Let's go ahead and check out what's coming in Manjaro GNOME 19. The installation process is basically the same so far. I don't see any major changes here. You still have a live desktop, just like always, and then you basically just go through the various screens and then fill out the information, and then you should be good to go. In my case, I decided to erase the entire disk. I wanted to basically start fresh. And just like before, you do have a choice of which Office suite you would like to go with. I always prefer LibreOffice, so that's what I decided to go with. That's tried and true for me. It always seems to fit the bill and it works pretty well. I don't really know what kind of use case we might have to need free office as an option, but if you guys are aware of any edge cases that would make free office a better choice than LibreOffice, definitely let me know in the comments below. Now for some reason I did run into an issue when it tried to erase the drive. I previously had CentOS running on this laptop. And when the Manjaro installer tried to erase the disk, well, it wasn't able to do that and the installer ended up crashing. To work around that problem, all I had to do was open up Gparted, which is included in the live media. And once that was open, I basically just created a brand new partition table. And then I tried the installer again and it worked just fine. I don't feel like I should have needed to use Gparted to manually delete all the partitions when the installer offers to do that for me. But again, this is a release candidate. So it's possible that this is a bug that they need to work out before final release. So overall, the installation process took somewhere between five to seven minutes for me, which really isn't all that bad. It did feel a little sluggish, but then again, this is a really old laptop, so that could very well be the reason why. And then once the installation is complete, you simply log in and then you are presented with your brand new desktop. So after I logged in, the first thing I did was I just clicked up here and then I went to the package manager. I wanted to see if there were any updates at all for me to install. And after I let it refresh, it did show me that there were some updates available. And I guess that actually makes sense. This is a rolling release, even though this is a work in progress version and this is a snapshot, there's always going to be some updates because, well, basically the package base is always moving. So I basically decided to, you know, let it install everything. I wanted to make sure that I had the latest updates as I do this overview. And then to be on the safe side, I just went ahead and rebooted the machine to ensure that I take advantage of all the new versions. Now straight away, one of the first things that I noticed is that the artwork has changed a little bit. We have this neat little wallpaper here. I'll go ahead and move this out of the way so you can get a better look at it. So they changed the default artwork, which is actually pretty cool. But perhaps the most noteworthy change here is the GNOME Layouts Manager, which is actually a highlight of this release. What this allows you to do is basically select a different layout for your GNOME desktop, so that way you can go ahead and customize it just the way you'd like. So for example, I'm going to choose GNOME right here, and I'll go ahead and apply it. And as you can see, the little panel that was here on the left went away. And now I have basically a vanilla GNOME layout, which is great because this is one of those things that I wish was already here. I mean, to be fair, even though they do offer a custom GNOME desktop and they always have, I could simply just disable the things that I don't like. But I actually like the traditional GNOME layout best, and I can easily get that here by just choosing the option here in the layouts menu. Now, this is interesting. There's also a Mate layout as well, so I'll go ahead and choose that. And this is pretty cool. It really does mirror the Mate desktop environment. And Mate is essentially a continuation of GNOME 2, or basically classic GNOME. 
and that gives me a menu down here at the bottom and it also gives me an applications and places menu up here on the top left and this is great for those of you that don't like the default gnome layout and if you want something a little bit more classic this utility right here actually makes it very easy for you to get back to that old school style of computing. If we check out traditional for example We have, well, a traditional layout. We have a panel down here at the bottom, and then we have our applications menu at the bottom left. And that's pretty cool. This actually mirrors, you know, KDE Plasma and even Windows and somewhat the Cinnamon desktop environment as well. So this is really awesome because even if you don't like the GNOME layout or the GNOME way of doing things, you can easily, well, as I said, you can customize it as you see fit and choose a layout that works best for you. And we'll go ahead and check out Modern. And, well, this is pretty cool, too. It's kind of like a combination of the vanilla GNOME layout, but with the addition of a macOS-style panel down here at the bottom of the screen. That's pretty cool. And if I right-click here, it basically gives me Dash to Dock Settings. So, and I guess you could consider this the secret sauce, so to speak, at least when it comes to this layout. They're essentially configuring the dash to dock extension for you, which is pretty cool because you know what? If this layout matches what you're looking for, that's one less thing for you to do after you install this distribution. And then you can go ahead and customize it further. As you see here, we have a few different tabs that give you basically various options where you can configure this accordingly. So for example, you can go ahead and customize the opacity here if you'd like, and you can go ahead and practically make that invisible. And you know what, I think that actually looks a little bit cooler. I think I might keep it that way. So that's basically the GNOME Layout Manager in a nutshell. Definitely a great inclusion here. I really think that's an awesome utility that'll just make it that much better for users. The release notes mention that they've added new layouts to the Layout Manager, so I know at least a few of these are brand new. But I'm just not sure if it's new to Manjaro 19 or if it was previously introduced via the rolling release updates model. But either way, I'm happy that it's here. It does make it that much better. And again, you can get to this Layouts Manager by opening GNOME Layouts Manager right here on the welcome screen that appears when you first log in. But you can also get to it by just typing layout or just part of the word layouts. It'll show up in the menu and then you can click on it. So that's how you can get back to it if you want to go and make some additional changes. But I guess the only thing that I would mention that could be a potential improvement for this utility is that it isn't actually present in the settings app. And maybe I just missed it or maybe I'm just blind, but the GNOME settings application would be a great place for the layouts manager to be. And well, I wasn't able to find it. So I guess if they wanna make an improvement, it would be to probably add it somewhere in here, which would probably be a great place for utilities such as that. But that's just a very, very minor complaint. Now, the release notes actually mention something interesting that I'm going to go ahead and check out. So just like before, Firefox is the default browser in this release. And that's not all that surprising. If you've used Firefox in the past, well, you know what to expect. But what they mention is that there is a utility, basically a command, and it's supposed to be fire gnome enable.sh. And what this command is supposed to allow us to do is to enable additional integration with Firefox with the GNOME desktop. So let's see what it does. So it looks like it did actually install some things here. So I'll go ahead and close out of here. And then let's close Firefox. And I'll relaunch it and see if I can notice any differences. And would you look at that? It's actually very, very different. I'm quite surprised. I was kind of expecting it to be a very subtle change, but this is a huge change. It actually looks like a GNOME app. So what I'm going to do is go back to the layout switcher And I'm going to go back to the default GNOME look and feel, or at least the vanilla GNOME default, because it was basically putting the close icon on the left side, which is kind of weird to me. But you see the difference. I mean, it changed the theme. Firefox actually looks like it was made by the GNOME developers, which is pretty cool. So I'll go ahead and open a new tab here, and then let's just open up my website. Get a feel for how responsive this is. Well, you know what? I can't complain. This is an older laptop. I think that the response, at least in Firefox, is pretty reasonable. 
In fact, the responsiveness altogether is actually really decent. Apps open reasonably fast. So I'll just open up LibreOffice, for example. There's Calc. I'll go ahead and open up Writer. And you know what? This is very responsive for a laptop that's probably three pushing four years old at this point. It might not have even been high-end when it came out. So this is great. I really do like the performance. I think part of that is due to the performance tweaks of GNOME itself. But, you know, I'm sure the Manjaro developers have done something to optimize it as well. The release notes also mention that if you enable Nightlight, which is this tab right here, it's supposed to actually change between light and dark themes depending on the time of day, which is awesome. And they even mentioned that the wallpaper will change throughout the day as well, which is also pretty cool. Now, speaking of wallpaper, if I go here to background, we can see some of the artwork that is included by default. I'm assuming anything that has this little icon down here in the bottom right probably means that it's a wallpaper that changes throughout the day that looks kind of like a clock. I guess that makes sense. But we also have some additional wallpapers here. So go ahead and switch to a different workspace so you can see that. That actually looks pretty cool. I like that one. And you know what? I do really think that the default wallpapers are pretty cool. I mean, look at this one right here. And I think I'm going to leave this one actually because I'm a sucker for really good storm wallpapers and this one's pretty cool. Now, of course, there are other improvements here as well, but I'm not going to go over all of them because they're smaller and we also benefit from all of the normal improvements we get on account of having the latest GNOME desktop implemented. So if you've seen any of my GNOME reviews in the past, well, you know basically what to expect. But there are a couple of other things that I like to point out anytime that I review Manjaro because I think these are features that really set it apart. And one of those features is the Manjaro settings, which I'll pull that up here. And this is actually separate from the GNOME settings. This is exclusive to Manjaro and basically gives you additional options that you don't normally get in GNOME settings or the settings screen on your typical desktop environment. And some of these aren't really all that exciting. I mean, time and date, for example, I mean, sure, that's fine. Locale settings, if you need to customize that kind of thing. And if I scroll down here, we have some hardware options as well. And actually, this is pretty cool because it does allow you to customize your various drivers and things if you do need proprietary drivers. But what I like the most is the fact that you can actually choose to follow a very specific kernel. And it may not seem like a very big deal. It is a rolling release. Arch Linux, for example, you get the latest kernel just by installing your latest updates. But Manjaro gives you a little bit more flexibility, actually a lot more flexibility, because you can decide to stick to a very specific kernel version and get updates for that kernel version. And that will make sure that you have control over, you know, what types of features you can benefit from because newer kernels, well, they do include newer features. So if you're using Ubuntu, for example, um, you might find that the kernel is out of date and there's some new features you would like to take advantage of. You could go ahead and choose the kernel that you would like. So for example, I can go ahead and install this one right here, Linux 5.5, and then I'll say yes. And there we go, that was pretty easy. I now have kernel 5.5 on my machine and I can now benefit from any new features that that may include. Now users of Arch Linux, for example, may not care a whole lot about this because they always get the latest kernel. But sometimes you don't want the latest kernel. Sometimes you want to follow a very specific version that works best for you. And Manjaro is a rolling distro that gives you that option. If I open up a terminal, we are currently running 5.4, so I'll go ahead and reboot. Let's just see if this works. All right, so I've rebooted. I'll pull up a terminal here. And sure enough, I am now running kernel 5.5. That's pretty cool. So, so far, I'm really impressed. I mean, there's a few little issues here and there, nothing too major. It is a release candidate, so some bugs are to be expected, but there's really nothing that stops me from using my computer or anything like that. Just little things, like I noticed that the 
boot process doesn't show a splash screen like it used to, so something probably needs to be fixed there. But this is release candidate one, so I think there's probably a few more testing rounds to go until this is final. And then if anything has changed majorly, I'll go ahead and cover it in a review on this channel. So make sure that you subscribe if you haven't already done so and you'll be the first to see it. So what are your thoughts on Manjaro? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Let me know in the comments below and then I'll see you in the next video.